I'm Melanie Miles, and on September the 26th, 2019, I was involved in a horrific car accident. A young man traveling approximately 101 miles an hour T-boned my car, and because my car was not flipping fast enough, he then impacted my car again at 88 miles an hour. Now, I'd like to say that's where my journey began with God, but see, he was already working before that. My accident happened in the front yard of Ricky and Rima Robinson, and they were out of town. You see, God had given them an opportunity to work in Orlando, Florida, and because of that, their daughter Sheena, who was a nursing student, was at their home. She heard the accident and came to the car where she not only just kept me company, but she also did things that saved my life. Hey, I'm Josiah Fulbright. I was electrocuted on August 15, 2019. I came in contact with a live wire, working on power lines for a local contractor, working in Brundage, Alabama. I was life flighted at UAB in Birmingham. I was unconscious for a week. And uh, when I when I woke up, I don't I don't have any memories for a whole week. And when I woke up, my wife was there in ICU, and Mary and I told her that I loved her. That was the first thing I said. And then uh, my parents came in, and then uh, about the third thing I said was I I told them that I seen Jesus when I was unconscious. It went like black all the way around me, like couldn't see nothing. I remember looking around and Jesus was standing there. Uh, head to toe, the full man was standing there. And uh, he reached his hand out, like he was like stretching his hand really far, like he was trying to get me up off the ground. And he looked at me dead in the eye and he said, I got this, son. And when he told me that, it was over, almost instantaneous. I just, it was so fresh on my mind. It's just like you couldn't tell it anybody enough. I told the nurses, I told the doctors, I told family, everybody, anybody that came to visit me. And it's still like that, but it's just so vivid in your mind, you know, that it, it, it's like words don't even do it justice, you know. And I think that's the way heaven will be, you know, when people think about heaven and, and all, it's just nothing of this world, you know, it's just so just vivid. When I was taken to the medical center, it was decided the best thing because of my head injury was to be airlifted to UAB. When I got to UAB, I had received already close to four units of blood, and after examination, I had over 30 broken bones, including um, the vertebrae in my neck, which I should have been paralyzed, several lacerations, and um, head trauma that they were not really sure what to do at that moment. I had surgery on my hips and my neck and to uh, close all the lacerations. They told my family and friends that it would be approximately six to 12 months before I would return to a normal life. But they didn't know my God as we do because at nine to 10 weeks, I was here in Dothan in physical therapy and I walked for the first time with a walker. It wasn't pretty, but I walked. After that, it became a cane and not long after that I lost the cane. Now at four months, at what should have been a long, painful recovery, I'm back at home living by myself, driving and walking with very little pain. God has shown himself through every step of the way. There were some tough times during that week. It was a little touch and go, but he's there He's there for us when we need him. And he wasn't there just for me. He was there for my family and everybody else at the time. There were some rough surgeries to go through. I lost my arm and my ear and my nose, but that's all right. It's just part of the plan. And when people say that uh, God's got a plan, you don't always know what that entails, but he, he's in control of everything, and 
he uh, he knows what's the best for everybody. Because uh, just because I got hurt and everything that I went through, there's no telling how many people that it's touched along the way and how many people it's going to touch. Because I'm just 23, I have a lot more living than I plan on doing between now and then. One day at physical therapy, when I was having therapy four, three to four hours a day, six days a week. And on this particular day, it was hard. Um, what they were asking me to do, I wasn't sure I could. I was exhausted physically, mentally, and emotionally. And out of the blue, I get this text from my oldest daughter, Kristen, and it said, Mom, I know what you're going through is hard, but you gotta remember, when David faced Goliath, he never once talked about how dangerous it was. He just claimed the power of God, and then he did it. So Mom, I'm just gonna need you to be a David. Well, I had to be a David. Now I've not conquered all of my Goliaths yet, but with God's power, I plan on conquering them. And we'll all have Goliaths in the future. And my prayer is, not just for me, but for everyone, that when we're faced with our Goliath, we'll just choose to be a David. When people say live life to the fullest every day, that, <laughs> That's a very true statement because, like I said, it can be taken from just instant. But I would say to go out and be, uh, just don't meet a stranger. Just talk to everybody because, like I said, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know who you can help. Somebody that's your best friend might look fine all the time, but they might be going through something every day. And just, just be that person for them that they, that, that, that they need and tell them about Jesus.